Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So there's a lot of talk going around about Spider-Man's suit during Civil War and the suit that he's going to be wearing in the new Spider-Man trilogy. So I wanted to do a video for my top 10 Spider-Man costumes. Now, if you're just going on like the basic Peter Parker costumes, there's about 17, almost 20 different costumes that he's worn in the comics. When you talk about the alternate versions of Spider-Man, like you talk about alternate universe versions, that number goes way, way up. Let's start with the Captain America Civil War talk first. So what's being reported now, like the, the big rumor mill is reporting that Spider-Man is going to have two different costumes. The first one is the lo-fi version that he's swinging around in New York in right now. And then he gets swept up in Civil War. Then we get to the new Spider-Man trilogy. So naturally there's going to be a progression of suits, just like we saw with the Captain America character. Our Iron Man's probably an even better example. He gets a shiny new suit every single movie, sometimes multiple suits within each movie. A lot of people are saying that even though Spider-Man's only going to be a small part of Civil War, a lot of what he does and the, the people that he interacts with will be in the vein of what he did in Civil War in the comics. That's just on like a really low level though. The Spider-Man that we see in the movies is going to be way different from the Spider-Man of the comics. In the comics, he was an adult. In the movies, he's going to be a teenager. In the lead up to Civil War in the comics, Spider-Man was living at the Avengers Tower with Aunt May and Mary Jane. Obviously, he's going to be 15 in Civil War, so he's not going to have Mary Jane, and he's still probably going to be with Aunt May out in Queens. That version of the Avengers Tower was basically like the Stark Tower that we see in the movies. T Tony Stark was a much bigger presence in the Avengers. A, a lot of his tech permeated the Avengers. So when Spider-Man gets a brand new suit, he gets the Iron Spider suit. It's given to him by Tony Stark. It's an Iron Man suit built to enhance Spider-Man's powers. It, it even helps him with his precognition. A lot of people are saying that Captain America Civil War is going to do kind of the same thing in that Tony Stark will give Spider-Man a suit. This is like a fan mock-up version of what the homemade Spider-Man suit is supposed to be. It almost feels a little bit in the vein of the Ben Riley suit where it's like part t-shirt, part form-fitting spandex. So naturally you just expect the Tony Stark version to be way sleeker. I could totally see a version of this where like halfway through the movie Tony Stark gives him a version of the spider suit that's red like his Iron Man suit red. But I think that's about as close as we'll get to the Iron Spider suit of the comics. You guys can let me know whether you agree or not. Do you think that Tony Stark's Spider-Man suit that he's going to give him is going to be really close to Iron Spider? Or do you think it's going to be completely different from the comic books? I think if we've learned anything from Marvel, it's that whenever they take stuff to the movies, they just tune the colors down a little bit. Does the colors tend to be a little less bright? But here we go. On to favorite Spider-Man suits. So here are like my top 10 favorite suits from the comic books. And this is taking from all the versions of Spider-Man, not just Peter Parker. Starting with number 10, the Fantastic Four baghead suit. He had to wear it after he lost the symbiote suit and he couldn't find anything to cover his face with, so he just had to put a bag on his head. Whenever he wore it, people called him the bombastic bag man. Number 9, the Captain Universe suit. This is one of those crazy storylines where like superhero goes to godlike superhero. It's actually kind of happened with Doom right now in Secret Wars. But he became Captain Universe for a little while, so his cosmic powers altered his suit to look more like Captain Universe. Number 8, the Dusk Suit. This was actually something adapted from a suit that he got in the Negative Zone. He gained the ability to blend in with shadows and he could straight up fly, like really fly. Number 7, the actual stealth suit. He actually built this to combat this sonic ability that Hobgoblin was using. It kind of looks like Tron cosplay, like Tron Spider-Man. Number six, the Future Foundation suit. He got this in Fantastic Four number one when he joined the Future Foundation. And like, obviously everybody in the organization got new costumes, but I really like the white design on everyone. It's just a nice change. I like the fact that even though the Future Foundation is a bunch of heroes, it feels just a little bit sinister. Like when everybody looks the same, something feels a little bit wrong. Number five, the Fear Itself suit. This is actually made of the same Uru metal that was used to make Thor's hammer. So that alone merits its place on this list. Too bad after they defeated the Worthy that Odin made Tony Stark destroy the suit. Sometimes Marvel will like give you something and then just snatch it right back. Like yeah, this is way too powerful for you to keep. Number 4, the Spider-Man 2099 suit. Originally, whenever they did the 2099 universe, it felt kind of gimmicky. I mean, I was really down for it. I was a lot younger when I started reading it. Then it went away, but they ended up bringing it back. And now it's a big part of Secret Wars. The way I think about this is that it's kind of like the Blade Runner Spider-Man costume, just because those comics borrow a lot thematically from Blade Runner. Number three, Miles Morales' Ultimate Spider-Man suit. This is just a twist on the classic Peter Parker suit, but I really like the black colors. It's, it's still Spider-Man, but it's different. Simpler is usually better. 
It's not quite as cool as Spider-Gwen's costume, but of all the alternate people to take the Spider-Man mantle, I feel like it's one of the best. Speaking of which, number two, Spider-Gwen's costume. Say what you will about the Spider-Gwen storyline, I like what they're trying to do with it. I like the idea of it. And I like that of all the alternate Spider-Men, it's the most different. On the flip side of that, if you wanted to be really mean about it and make fun of it, you could call it the Hot Topic Spider-Man costume. I think it's perfect for Gwen Stacy. If Peter Parker were to wear a costume like that, it, it would feel a little ridiculous. And finally, probably as, as you would expect, my favorite Spider-Man costume, the classic symbiote suit from the original Secret Wars. Of all the original variations on Spider-Man's costume, this is probably the most famous. Like, of, of all the different costumes that people remember, they remember the classic Peter Parker, red and blue, and they remember the symbiote suit, the black suit. Although technically he had a black cloth version too. But it was just a non-symbiote version of the symbiote suit. Really the symbiote gave him pretty much all the powers that he had with the iron spider suit. Like the enhanced senses, the enhanced strength, everything cranked up to 11. But you have to battle the will of the symbiote. So if your personality isn't strong enough to fight it, you'll go completely apeshit. So now it's your guys' turn. Let me know, like, what is your favorite version of the Spider-Man costume? It doesn't have to be any of Peter Parker's costumes. It could be one of the alternate ones. And, like, like what do you think about what they're doing with the Spider-Man costumes now? Really, like, the Secret Wars costume that we've seen. Like, Miles Morales is still wearing his ultimate suit. They're, they're pretty true to the classic versions. We'll have to see what they're doing with all the costumes post-Secret Wars. I give Marvel bonus points anytime they try something new, but I feel like... People like Spider-Man, like, they're so identified with that original costume that you can't change it too much for too long, or people will just freak. So that's why you see them playing with the look of a lot of the alternate Spider-Man a lot more than they play with Peter Parker's look. Just a reminder about the movie, if you don't know, Captain America Civil War is coming out May 6th. We have Deadpool in February. There's going to be a lot of comic book movies in the early part of the year. We're also going to get, I think, X-Men Apocalypse is coming out before Captain America Civil War 2. I also wanted to remind everyone, tomorrow they're doing a press conference for the Arrow, Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow, so I'll be doing a bunch of DC stuff tomorrow, a bunch of like DC TV related stuff. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. If there's any other like Marvel movie video stuff you guys want me to do, just let me know in the comments. We're really getting to the point where we're starting to see more and more from Captain America Civil War. We're probably going to get the trailer after D23, which is actually going to happen in a couple weeks. A lot of you guys have been asking me about Cable showing up in Deadpool stuff. I did an X-Force video because that's basically where they're going to be crossing over. That movie is a little bit further off, but you can click here to learn all about that. And you can click here to learn all about Baron Zemo in the comics. He's going to be a big person in Captain America Civil War. So thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.